everybody, it's me, Jeff, with Fuller Embroidery Works, and I am joined by the invisible Mike Muldowney. <laughs> From the Nerd of the North, um, joining us today in the live for the Embroidery Nerd. I'm What's totally going on, dude? Not stalling. <laughs> yeah. 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 This, is, this is the filler portion of our program. This is the filler portion of our program. So we have Cindy King joining us. Hello, Cindy. We have Miss Ramona McKee hey. joining us as well. Hello, Ramona. We have Barb LaFond watching from North Central Minnesota. We have Frankie, who I believe is Mr. Frank Dunn, watching from the UK. How are we, Frank? And, huh? I, I said hi, Frank. Oh, there you go. And that pretty much catches us up in the comments. And today we'll be talking about, I think we're adding a letter to a blanket, if I remember right. Um, yeah, we're going to we're gonna watch Matt fail miserably at something that we all do every day. <laughs> all day, every day. Yeah. It'll yeah, be fantastic. He's like, he's like, I don't do this stuff. I'm like, what are you talking about? It's just putting stitches on flat fabric. It's That's kind of your MO. <laughs> I mean... This isn't flat. This has texture. Thank you very much. Oh, and hi, by the way. Oh, and there's Matthew Enderley from Patch Phrase, as well as, dun, 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 Mr. Justin Armenta from J.A. Oh, there he is. Hello. Oh, oh, sorry oh, for being there. late. Oh, the spinning wheel of Justin. The spinning wheel of Justin. Did I miss anything, Gabe? Oh, sorry. Do I have to duct tape that out before I... <laughs> There yeah, we no, go. Product, no product placement deals here. Uh, so what Justin missed is uh, we gave around 50 free designs to the first person to say JA digitizing in the, the comments. Oh man, he's uh, a okay. guy. Uh, <laughs> I don't I don't see any comment, so so I'm good. Yeah, if you just don't look, they don't exist. But uh, <laughs> yeah, some some sweepstake restrictions may apply. Um, but. Yeah, so I'm assuming you guys did an introduction, which made fun of me. So good thing these are recorded, and you can go watch it on YouTube uh, and help us get our watch hours up. But basically, what happened is I, hi, I'm a patch addict, and I don't do anything other than patches. So when I was approached to do a blanket, I said, I don't have all the stuff for that, but I have a buddy who does that, which is Jeff. Uh, however, they didn't want to go that route. So they went to Etsy and either my sister uh, put the name in wrong or the Etsy person put the name in wrong. I don't know. All I know is that if I would have did it in the first place, I wouldn't be doing it now. But then we won't have this content. So <laughs> here is what we are going to be working on. So it's a um, I'm pretty sure this is the baptismal blanket. Um, I don't remember. I'm really bad with dates. However, you'll notice how it says Matthias James. It should be Matthias James. So what I already did behind the scenes is, unfortunately, I did not use a thread converter this time because I didn't take a picture of this. And um, But I have my Habendash Filtech color palette, and I basically just lined it up. Boom. And... Uh, had this color selected, which I got locally at my uh, Fabric Bash. It's a local store right down the street from me. Uh, they're pretty awesome. They have like every Filtech color, and I could see it and buy it same day, which is awesome. Um, yeah, I, I wish I hadn't got stuck with Gunold when I got my machines. Uh, I would have so went with something local. I don't have anything against the Gunold thread. I'm happy with it. I'm sticking with it, but but being able to go down the street and get some would be so nice. That's awesome. It is like you can see the yellow over my shoulder. That's that's actually Madeira. Um, I'm sure I have Gunnold in the background somewhere, and Isocord is back there, and RA is also going to be hitting around. But I'm trying to go Filtech because the company's awesome. The, that's their plug. Not is, that a, is that a custom color card? Uh, no. So color cards, you have to pay for them at the local store so i just slapped my sticker on one and it's mine now there you um, go. <laughs> he I slapped it on the, on yeah. the book in the store and was like i brought this in with me see it's got <laughs> <another> one. <laughs> exactly i went in with Allie and i specifically held it like this as i walked through the door so the security camera would see my logo on it 
So that way I can prove <laughs> oh, I need to get jumped. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Um, oh, so that's hey, how I, I see. Uh, but by the way, another plug, the uh, thread converter app, I added another 88 colors to Filtech. So uh, I didn't realize I was that far behind, but uh, they're there. So there we go. Should we get started? Wait, we didn't start already? Hold on. Did you hear about the 40 way tie on that giveaway? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. sounds like Justin's gonna be a little busy. <clears throat> yeah, wasn't that wasn't that a bunch of free designs for everybody who entered? I thought that was. I thought it was per person. Yeah, I don't remember. Person. Yeah, Justin's not commenting, so I, I'm not really not really sure. We'll just we'll just go for everyone. <laughs> I can't I can't hear I can't hear. Oh, <laughs> you have to that's fine. Do. Uh, All right, so. I don't know how everyone else would do this. I've done something similar before. I did a, a pack, like a big jacket back patch, and I forgot. Um, or no, I, it was International Harvester, but I spelt it like the Harvest Store Silo. Farmer, duh. So I had to stitch out the, the O to put an E, and then I had to do pretty much the same thing. So I'm going to try that process similar with this. I don't know what other ways that you guys would envision. Um, but what I'm going to have to do for this one is I'm going to go um, scan it on my flatbed scanner so that I can get a nice resolution of the S because I can just copy the S in the thighs over to the to, yep. uh, James and I can just digitize it to that. Or I can have one of them digitize it. Uh, maybe we should do an impulse. What do you think, Jeff? Not at the moment. <laughs> I don't even have it open. Okay. Well, I'm going to go. I was like, yeah, I get the day off. <laughs> I'm going to go out, scan it, and uh, I'll come back. And I guess you guys can talk about me behind my back again. Oh, We're going to talk about that giveaway for 500 free patches. There you go. There you go. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. And, and all our links to where you can go find us and subscribe and give us coffee <coughs> and stuff. Okay, I'm leaving now. <laughs> so the one thing I did notice on that, luckily, with his fix, a lot of times when you forget a letter and you're dealing with two lines of lettering that are centered to each other, adding that other letter to the end is going to throw off how centered it is. Yeah. But I was looking at his and that M and Matthias kind of loops further to the left. So visually, I think it's going to be okay. Yeah, I, I was it's, thinking the same thing. It's going to, it looks like it's going to wind up okay. Yeah. So, so that's, that's one thing that you have to realize when you when you are fixing things like that is is yeah. multi-lined of lettering you are going to throw off the yeah. how centered it is so yeah i mean we're we're here specifically to give matt a hard time while he's doing this but it, it this actually <laughs> does take a a bit of a a skilled touch this isn't a this isn't an easy thing to do there's a yeah. hundred ways to do it and there's a thousand ways to do it wrong so right yeah and one to do it right maybe two hey you only so, need to find one of them <laughs> so while while Matt is is scanning that, I mean, one one thing I do, I don't know how you guys do this. Well, I know he's fixing something that was done elsewhere. Um, but if you are fixing a mistake that you made and you do recognize it before it is unhooped, always, always, always leave it hooped. Yeah, yeah. Um, trying to you know hoop something that has been unhooped and to try to get it straight again, especially if you're dealing with something that really needs linear you know eye lines that that need to be lined up it's really hard to get that garment straight again um yeah depending on the fabric it's gonna pull. so so some of the newer tajimas uh single head specifically because this, this is useless on a multi um but some of the newer single heads have a laser alignment rotation feature so you mm -hmm. can you can you know, ding the laser in two points and it'll automatically rotate the design to line up with those two points. It's useful for doing stuff like this. It's useful oh, wow. for aligning stuff to plaid patterns. It's useful for aligning stuff to a pocket, like a shirt pocket. It's, uh, it, it's super handy and it's, uh, you know, it's one of the things that I wish my older machines had, but, uh, there's, a, there's other ways to do it. One of, one of my favorite things to do if I've got to realign a, uh, a design, is to take uh, like painter's tape, painter's masking tape, mm -hmm. and tape it down, 
uh, in a straight line along the design somewhere, whatever, and then uh, use that to align it into uh, a mighty hoop because they're square. And then once it's once I'm happy with how that's aligned, then just rip the tape up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and the other thing too, uh, like when Matt is is scanning this in and he's going to digitize that S. Um, typically, what I'll try to do is if you are trying to line something up after the fact, like he's doing, is pick a spot in your design that's going to be easily to line up. If you don't have you know the laser pointers and whatnot on your machine. Mm -hmm. Pick a spot on your design that's that's in your existing design that you can choose as your your center point, even though it may not be the center point of what whatever element you're going to be sewing. And that way, you can have kind of that spot on the on the design that you can say, okay, at the very tip of this T or 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 wherever it may be, this is where I'm going to try to center my needle. And then you know, anything you're sewing is going to be based off that center point. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Cindy's got a neat tip there. I don't think I can uh, I can grab the comment though. This one here. Yeah. So the letter on the stabilizer, and then keep your alignment and match up your spot. Yep, that's a definitely a good way of doing yeah. it. Because then you would what just like uh, like spray tack down the the item afterward, I guess. So you would sew it on the stabilizer, then then paste the blanket in or something like doing like doing in the hoop kind of deal. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That looks very, very oh, you guys brought concentrating. Me up he's okay. he's very he's very concerned. He's he doesn't he's like I'm not hooping twelve. This is going to be weird. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I gotta put my hat on so no one can see me. The, the <laughs> That's, not hat hat. That's not a blank hat. I'm not doing hats either. <clears throat> So here's another way of doing it. I'm not sure if, especially on a blanket like that, but uh, the first question is how hard is it to rip out the whole name? Uh, in my opinion, if, if, if it is completely off and it is going to look bad adding that S, which I think he is that saving grace of that M kind of being far to the left. Um, my opinion, the, the amount of time it takes and the chances of ruining the garment, especially with, you know, something that's, that is custom for whoever that's for. Yeah. I, I don't think it's worth the, the chance, especially with that type of material. That's kind of a open weave. Yeah. It's, it's real easy to get Lots those tweezers. Yep. yep. Real easy to get those tweezers. Thing. Yep. Pull, pull wrong. And he's unraveling that whole thing. Yep. So here's a picture. Of how I just did it. I put it in my simple um, scanner, multi-function machine. I just scan it. It's connected directly to my Google Cloud. So all I do is it just automatically uploads it. I download it, and then I put it in my software. But uh, I have that one, and then this picture of the cat that I took on my way upstairs. I just had to share because who doesn't like cats except dog people, which I am. Okay. So I'm using Wilcom just because I'm still a little bit more familiar with it. If we we're getting Jeff to do this, then he would do it. Uh, however, he did not want to do it. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Shots fired. All right. So first thing I got to do is I need to size the um, image, which my caliper, a digitizer's favorite tool, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply measure the current S that I will be copying. So zero it out, and you can just pretend that you can see what I'm doing. Uh, the S is about 15 millimeters tall. So I can make the software do that. And then I got about three Seven. millimeters satin width. A quick a quick tip, if I may, so you don't have to measure afterwards. If you scan with a ruler in the image, then you can just yep. set your, yeah, your scale. So the, the way I used to do that is I would actually put a quarter on the glass because the U.S. quarter is 24.26 millimeters in diameter. And then I would just draw a circle. Well, originally, yeah. But 
in Wilcom in Pulse, you have like a reference tool where you can click um, your sh your shape, and then you can put exactly how tall it was. So I just did yeah. the top and the bottom. This is 15, and you can see it increased just a little bit. So that's the same thing that Justin's saying. You do a ruler because now you know. Like if I pull out uh, this little guy, which you can't see. But it is. It has. It goes all the way down to sixty uh, fourths of an inch. Yeah. So I could get pretty fine with that. Yeah. Yeah. Just change the kid's name. Cindy says that's yeah. That's <laughs> a viable option. That's an easier one. <laughs> yeah. And it, um, for me, it might be easier. Yeah. But another an, another tick in favor of doing the ruler instead of the quarter is that uh, not only does Wilcom, and I'm sure other software has it too, the, the scale between two points, so you can pick two points and set that to a certain size. Um, but it also has the rotate to two points. So you can you can click two points and make it, set it to zero degrees. Mm -hmm. So that if you scan something in with a ruler lined up, you can not only set the scale using the ruler, but then you can also level it right up in the software and the picture will wind up you know, crooked, but but uh, whatever you're trying to design against. Oh, that's a heck of a weave. What's on the backside of this, Matt? Uh, did not look like anything. So they either used a wash away or a tear away. That is ballsy on this stuff. Yeah, again, I've never done this before. And I'm trying to see where the letter is. I'm going to have to probably make it a little bit wider because it's going to drop into it. Um, okay, that's pretty good. I like that. Um, Jeff's like, why didn't you use the the, the, the proper tool? <laughs> the proper tool is the one that gets the job done. Yeah, it just means it takes a little bit longer. All right, so I like zooming in way too far. Um, that's one of my things uh, that I do like to do. And we're just going to try to make this a little bit better. Yeah. So I already know that one of the issues I'm going to run into is that because of the the, the, the amount of weave, it, if it lands in that point, it's going to look a little off. So I'd rather it look a, a little bit wider unless I'm thinking wrong. But yeah. I mean, I got three really good digitizers below me on the screen. So if this goes bad, I'll blame it. On Is there that. somebody I can't see? Because that's I am not in that group. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can drive the car, but I ain't no racer. <laughs> All right, so here is my S. It's as simple as that. Um, so what I should be able to do is export this onto my USB key throw it in my Tajima, and then I'll set up my um, my machine in order to do it. So I kind of heard a little bit of what uh, you guys were talking about and recommendations on how how you would do this. The way I did it for that patch, I should have looked for the pictures beforehand, but I believe I took um, the, the patch and I had it in the, um, the hoop. And then I put painter's tape down on a straight reference line and then was able to line it up that way. So that's kind of the way I was thinking. Another way that I was brainstorming this is using my Madeira's, uh, I think it's all like 100 micron um, plastic stuff and putting that in the frame and then doing a run stitch, just like a kind of like a center run underlay of where the S would be and line it up with the blanket underneath it. Because then I could uh, hold it would be one thing, but then if it shifts or it flexes a little too much, um, then you, that would be an issue. Uh, and there is one other way, but I don't remember what we all had. So I don't know what what would you guys recommend as far as doing that. Like which option do you think would be the best for for aligning the for aligning it in the hoop or yeah, for making sure that it actually stays good and true. Yeah, yeah. I would, I would do the the masking tape deal. 
Okay. Cause then as soon as, cause then as soon as it's hooped, you can just peel the masking tape out. It doesn't matter if there's a little bit left at the edge, you're not going to get anywhere close to it. And, uh, and it gives you a nice, nice straight line. It's not, it's painter's tape, so it's not super sticky. That'd be, that'd be my go-to. All right. Well, now I gotta get it to recognize my USB drive. All right. We'll go with Design Nine. That seems like a very logical and organized name for this file. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna pop off this camera and head on over. I'll try to do that YouTuber vlog thing. <laughs> <laughs> we need mood, mood music. Some uh, so Ram some Ramona, Ramona and Nikki asked about the rotation thing. Um in Wilcom. I've got a file here I think I can do it with. Oh, the reference? Yeah. Rotate by reference point or scale yeah. by reference point? Don't mind me. I'm going to see if I can get it set up so that don't waste a bunch of Matt's time on my stupid little thing. Someone forgot to turn the Tajima on. Uh-oh. So now i got to wait for it to boot. That's one thing about the older like PLC based machines. You turn them on and they're ready to go in like four or five seconds. Yeah, yeah. I fully shut all the machines off a couple nights ago because you were gonna have some severe storms running through. So I figured it's just a little safer. I don't unplug them, so it probably won't really do a whole lot, but you know. Yeah. YOLO. Yeah. But so, as I said before, I got the thread. Um, I used the thread card to actually um, match it, and it's a pretty dang close. Both, I did a blind test with myself and Allie. Um, we both picked out which ones we thought it would be, and we both actually settled on the exact same one. So that's what we went with. Um, well, ladies have a much much wider color palette than than we do so that's a safe bet i would say are you saying something there no i'm saying as, as far as i'm aware there's actual research and evidence that women can recognize far more colors than than men can So what's uh, what did they do for bobbin mat? Did they just use straight white bobbin or? Yep, they used white. Okay. So now you're like running that through the entire thread path all the way through. That seems difficult. Oh, does Matt not know the knot? I don't know if he's naughty or not. How can you not know the knot? I don't know what knot you're talking about. Did nobody not teach you the knot? <laughs> He's not been taught. I can't not turn on my machine without tying that knot. I am not going to comment on this. <laughs> All right, cool. Not now I gotta out where all my hoops went. Wait, you use hoops? I thought he used a sash for everything. Yeah, he has to go blow the dust off of them and find. <laughs> um, I don't know which one. All right, so question: Do I want to hoop the, the actual thing, or do I want to float it? That is a good question. Well, what kind of hoops do you have? I only have the regular green ones. Regular green ones. Um, you know that's. That's probably got enough resiliency in it. I would probably just go ahead and standard hoop, like just go ahead and hoop it up. Yeah, I would hoop it. 
I wouldn't want to have it risk on catching or something. There's a lot of bulk outside the hoop if you tried to float it, and it might decide to come out. And that fabric, too, like Cindy's saying, there's going to be a lot of movement on that fabric, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Especially the excess that's going to be hanging off. It's going to weigh it down. Yeah. So are you going to, are you using a cutaway there, Matt? Or? Uh, this is a tearaway. That's a tearaway. Is it a tear and wash? It is a tear. I don't know if I might have tear and wash. Not all my stuff is labeled anymore, so that's always a nice thing. Yeah. Q one hundred and two. That is the wash away. Yeah, that's water soluble. Was there was there any evidence of a like a soluble topper on it or anything? Yeah, I, I see. Or not on the top, but on the the bottom. There's a tiny. There, the backside. There's a little bit. I don't know what type it is though. Yeah, that's a wash away. I think you need to put that under a microscope and check it out there, Matt. Yeah, that's in my closet. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna need a a microbe level. We're gonna need a full diagnostic on that. Yeah. Coming your way when you're doing it. <laughs> you gonna double that up? We're, we're doing our job in the peanut gallery over here. Yep. Oh, you know what's really handy for this kind that's of stuff? The, that's the only reason I showed up. <laughs> it's like the, the Walter and uh, what's-his-face from uh, the Muppets. Oh, Waldorf and... Uh, oh, I mean, I actually, I actually feel yeah. like we're those three guys that sit in the movie theater on Mystery Science Theater 3000. <laughs> we're just talking over a Matthew YouTube video. <laughs> Yeah. This is like a city job. One guy doing the work. The other three standing around talking about it. Uh, so, so I Matt, does your, does your team not, have the two-point alignment system? Not his. Nope. I think next, next gen. Next gen. Wait, isn't the controller the same previous gen as this gen? Uh, I, I think know. it's a. I don't think it's that machine uh, model that has that. Oh, but the controller is the same. I thought. Yeah. Probably not because we suspected that our controller was going out on one of these machines, and they said that we would have to fully upgrade to the new controller. Oh. Yeah, I suppose that's an option on the newer ones that are more uh, like PC based, like Windows CE kind of stuff. Like the older machines, like mine, you're stuck with what they were built with. You know, it's amazing though the machines, because like my my Happy's, I don't know, three years old mm -hmm. or so, and it's the controller's uh, CE embedded. Um, Windows XP, I think, and the same with the ZSK. It's a uh, embedded Windows. Mm -hmm. But I know the new Happies are embedded Linux. They've moved from Windows to Linux on them. Yeah, uh, it's in, it's inevitable. There's always somebody in the groups with showing a picture of a controller with a Windows CE logo on it. What does this mean? <laughs> it means your controller's booting. It means it means trouble. <laughs> Uh, so one of the things I just did is I changed the design to have it start in the bottom left of the design so I can align it up a little bit easier instead of having to find the center of the letter. Yeah. Uh, so I had to go back and do that real quick. But good thing you could see me off screen. <laughs> Leveled up. I thought that meant free life. Free life. <laughs> I was trying not to unfold this because then I have to fold it again. But if someone would like to donate to the Get Mad a 
You may you may want to just flip yeah, it just around and do it upside down or drop your table. Yeah, yeah. Drop your table. Oh, that is a good idea. You, did, you didn't know it does that, right, Patchman? No, I never taped this out. <laughs> it, it came that way. <laughs> yeah, at least I got a table with it. Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I can move the camera before I knock that over. <laughs> well, there it goes. I is professional embroiderer. <laughs> See now, I I would have slid it in on the bottom mounts so that the blanket still has something to lay on. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> if if we were in that same room with Matt right now, he would have thrown us out by now. <laughs> He'd be throwing things at us. <laughs> Worth it though. <laughs> He was like, I'm going to come visit you at your house. Now he's not you going to. You think you're so smart. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Just wait till you get your glitter bomb in the mail. <laughs> I yeah, got one of those ones. The driveway was sealed forever. Showing up from batch Cindy, Cindy's yelling at you, Matt, saying you should have centered the, uh, the S in the center of your hoop. Yeah, well, I don't... I, I would have to float it then because it's too, uh, it's too close to the edge. It, 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 it was not close a, to the edge, yeah. Not enough material to grab onto. Yeah, yeah. it would have been. Because this would at least be caught enough. Yeah. Now, Cindy, Cindy did, I think, suggest earlier to uh, hit it with a shot of spray tack, um, which could have been a good idea. I don't know if, it, but if you caught it all with the hoop, then I think you're going to be okay. Yeah. Now I just got to line the sucker up. Cindy, I guess it's a guy thing. Yeah, living on the edge, Cindy. That's right. <laughs> We're going to need a theme song just for Matt. <laughs> yeah. This is where it explodes. Yeah. Did you trace? Uh, are, you, trace. are you sweating yet, Matt? <laughs> oh, it is very hot down here. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Okay. Last thing I can do is grab my little little ruler. I was about to grab my debit card, but that would be the first time that I displayed it on camera. Let's see. Eyeball it up. That looks about good. Interesting move with the old... Uh ruler there so humor me while i'm here yes if you're tracing can you stop on any one of the boundaries and move the design no you have to wait until the trace is completed then you can move it a little bit and then oh. you can do another and then you can do a retrace that's horrible <clears throat> yeah. i can do that on my machines i can stop it so i can go to the bottom of the file and then i can adjust it and then continue the trace it's kind of nice yeah, no, we, oh, well. we can do that. Mine is also all paid off <laughs> in cash. So, yeah, mine too. Mine was a lot cheaper yeah. <laughs> than it was. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we will. Cindy's, ever. Cindy's about to have a conniption because Matt didn't do a test. <laughs> I mean, I still can. You guys don't have faith in me? Oh, I'm, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. She's yelling. She's yelling for you to stop and nothing, run a nothing bad can go wrong here. <laughs> He's gonna run it on top of it, man. <laughs> he just he doesn't want to hoop any more fabric, so he's just grabbing whatever's handy. His Rubik's cube is gone. Oh, that's going to be loopy. 
with the edge on underlay and that funky fabric. Throw out some pull comp. You can use like a 0.95 pull comp, three millimeter pull comp. Mm -hmm. While you're at it, just calm with by like yep. eight millimeters. It is, it is an S. That looks like an S. Oh, Pretty see, messy. we'll go with, you know, Cindy's on top of it. You should test, show it out. And Gina's on top of it. You might want to slow the yep. machine down for this open weave. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is just the same. So the yeah. whole point of this is to make everyone uh, rip on me for trying to do something that's not a patch. Ramona wants to know if, uh, does that test stitch use a similar fabric and stabilizer type? <laughs> And Cindy's curious how the size compares to the actual blanket. Ironically, you say this is not a patch, but actually that's exactly what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's just 100 mile an hour tape. I mean, if you want, I could do it on mylar. <laughs> it would give it sparkle. I think you're going to be fine. What's the worst that could happen? You ruin an heirloom blanket. No big deal. Yeah. Just order another one off of Etsy and maybe they'll spe spell it right. Ooh. Boom. I don't know. It looks like 0. 0.04 millimeters too tall. Yeah, okay, we're that's moving on. <laughs> moving on. Class is resuming. I can't. I can't get out of here fast enough with these guys, he says. <laughs> Focus your camera, Matt. Focus your camera. Mm. Oh, there we go. There we are. Right. You have your seam ripper ready. You could just scale it down 2% with the machine, because we all know scaling machine files is a good idea. Uh, so what I'm going to do is try to get my machine to slow down. But for some reason, it is not taking the should be in the C menu. The C Isn't it like the first first item in the C menu, Justin? Does that sound right? Oh, well, okay, I guess I can set the maximum. I use the dial when it's running. Yeah, but then I gotta run to pull the green button. Direct to garment patch. This is this open weave will pull more than the in right. sample. It it will pull in more. Yeah. Yeah, Gina's right. So yeah, just spin the wheel once it starts there and it'll slow it down. You I would take your tape, tape off. Yeah, take yeah. your tape off. I would just inch through the whole thing. Just hold the start button. Just let's walk through this thing. <laughs> He's going to throw the tape Matt, off. Stop it. Matt, Matt, you're going to sew the tape down. You're going you're gonna to have some blue tape. Oh, God. Oh, Matthew. Oh. He just sewed the tape down. Uh, yeah. That's... They're getting extra blue. <laughs> He just turned off his mic or his, his speaker. So he can't He's hear us I am He's not listening to these guys anymore. <laughs> Gosh, you guys got ye little faith in. Wait, me. why didn't you use a topping? Doodly doodly doo. That's the Tajima. Congratulations, you have finished your job. And he has sewn it to the back of the Carmen, too. He's sewn it to itself around the hoop. Did he just miss that? I, yeah, I think he. I don't think the needle even touched the tape. Oh wow! Yeah, lucky. What, what a pro! <laughs> but he sewed the blanket. Did you sew the blanket to itself? Wow, <laughs> you guys have no faith. Oh, no, we're not. We're not here for faith. <laughs> we're here for popcorn. <laughs> Sounds like you're here for fate. Well, a little bit of that too. He's just praying to that cross in the blanket. And make sure that it comes out okay. <laughs> Ramona says I don't think anyone will notice it looks amazing Cindy says perfection for Matt and uh, Nikki says it's funny I'd sell it this is good good job Matt you've done well it's a slightly different color <laughs> it is not you can't tell Jeff the so I don't know what thread they actually use. The only difference is that it's slightly less, like, metallic-y looking. Shine. It's it, got a less of a sheen. 
Yeah, I you, think you're, 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 you can't even tell really. I mean, unless if you're us and a viewer who knows that it's that way, you won't tell. But I mean, my sister I, probably will because she knows that it's that and she's very critical. But we're all emailing her right now, <laughs> telling her that it's a slightly different color. So she'll be. I can see that it's a sixteenth of a millimeter off, and it's just bugging me. Yeah. <laughs> Sandy says the baby's gonna throw up on it anyways. Oh yeah. <laughs> Boom! It's gone. And then I can just wet it a little bit with some semi-warm water, and the blank will be done, and I'll give it back to Allie to fold it up. There you go. You're not even gonna fold and bag it. What temperature do you need that water, Matt? Uh, exactly uh, 129 degrees Fahrenheit for no more than eight seconds. Uh, if it's a three-quarter phase moon, if it's a red moon, you got to do it a little bit warmer because of the tide pool is going to pull your water a little bit colder. Good yeah, but, what it, but mercury is in retrograde, so I don't know what. Uh, you're right. I might have to switch to just warm milk. <laughs> I right. use just dis distilled water myself. So I'm going to switch back to the other camera. I fire hose it. <laughs> when I have to wash out, wash away stabilizer, full blast. There's no gentle, let's dip it in this bowl. It's like throw it in the wash cycle, yeah. rinse cycle, dryer. But there, there's nothing like watching 40 patches just waft away out of a bunch of wash away. That is pretty cool. Yeah. I, I have a bad. feeling Jeff would just take all the, the stuff into the shower with them. Conserve water. Don't waste yep. it. Plus, then you have a towel when you get out. You don't have a towel when you get out because it washes away. <laughs> all right. So just to review what we basically just did is so this was a baby blanket where the name was misspelled and i just added the s to it um again i don't know if the digitizer made the mistake or if my sister just didn't know how they're going to spell their baby's middle name i don't know but um i'm not going to start that family feud but uh yeah it really wasn't that hard uh, I think there's actually a lot of tips, and there's like something on my face here. Oh, who told them? <laughs> but uh, was that there the whole time? No, just for most like of most of it. No, okay, that's fine. I don't care. It's, it's my beauty mark. Um, but it, I, I do believe that there was a lot of comments in the chat about some techniques that they that people would do, what types of stabilizer you would use. Uh, which I think is actually makes this a really informal or informative uh, live because there's all that stuff. And now I see that there's 10 private chats. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Cindy says, Matt, you look so cute with your blankie. Oh, uh, thank you. Oh, you Oh, you only mentioned it one minute ago. Okay, well... <laughs> Trust, when I first saw it, I'm like, oh, I've got an ant on my screen. And I was like, no, Matt's got an ant on his camera. Oh, wait, no, that's grease on his face. Yeah. I don't know where that came from. At least, oh, I know. It's because I touched the side of the machine when I was petting it, and then I touched my face. Yeah. That is why you don't do any of that. Uh, At least you could fix it. I can rub all I want, but I'm still ugly. So. <laughs> uh, well, you know what would make you less ugly? Is if you were to get one of these. I have three of those. Oh, well, I got two. They work great for chopsticks. Yeah. yeah. And they also work to uh, set the uh, the bobbin tension. Yep. Oh, and yeah. if you measure one, it's like five and a half inches. Yeah. 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 I guess if I know. Only you. anyone knew what these were. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> great little, it's great the 3dpuffprotool.com from 3D Puff Pro Tools. Buy That's one today. Awesome. There's Shanks for Embroidery Prison. <laughs> proud sponsor. Coming sponsor to a prison near you. <laughs> so right. for those of you that don't know, that is a tool that just are meant to that guy right there. 
<laughs> not you know, invented, that guy. created, yep. and now markets and sells for yes. cleaning up all your 3D Puff Pro tools, weeding your vinyl, and something with sublimation taken all the above and to eat your kombucha. ramen noodles. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I use yeah. one. I use I use one constantly. It's a, it's my fidget toy. So just it in case is. you guys were wondering, it works as a fidget toy too. Yeah, yeah but it, it hurts when you poke yourself with it. I mean, it's not sharp, but when you're really playing with it and then you're just like yeah, it, 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 it will leave a mark. Yeah, it will leave a mark. Yeah, won't puncture, but it'll leave a mark. Yeah, uh, I don't so, know what else we had to cover because uh, I don't really know what you guys talked about before. Um, well, more, I think the moral of the story is, is just seeing you know the four of us discuss it and and everybody in the comments that are pretty much all embroiderers. There's a lot of ways to attack this. Yeah. Um, yep. Moral of the story is when you order a blanket, make them send you a digital proof. So you can check the spelling. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, and that's that's a re that's a really good lesson for just any job you're doing with lettering. Make, make sure it matches what the client sent you. Exactly. Yeah. I've I've specifically told clients. I said I need you to email me the list, exactly how it's spelled, because that's what I will sew. I'm not going to check it. I don't know how you usually spell Janice. <laughs> Like, I mean, today's Janice spelling from 20 years ago, Janice spelling is yeah. completely different. How's, yeah. how's anybody supposed to know in this in this world where you can spell anything anyway? And, oh, that's not how you pronounce that. The, as far as names, uh, that, that's our policy exactly. We yeah. we ask you to email it. Um, not only is it how however it is the the end user spelled it, but copy and paste is a great wonder. So even the translation between you reading it off your screen and typing it into your embroidery program, you eliminate that as well if you're copying and pasting. So yeah, that's that's one way to just avoid the issue from the get-go. Yeah. Yeah, one yeah. of the things so, that I Nick mentioned sending a proof to, which is a good which is a good idea. But uh, but yeah, I I mostly just go with I will sew what you send me. It is your responsibility to make sure it's right. And I, I don't do not you. try to type names either. I no. copy and paste it no matter what, because there's been times where I'm doing like name patches. Oh, yeah. And yep. I'm like, oh, I know this person. I'll put something in. But when I was running Wilcom uh, before they updated to 4.5, and it was 4.2, not Ultimate Special Edition, but <laughs> I would be typing and it would lag. So it would just completely miss a letter, even though I know I hit it on the keyboard. It just, yep. and then I'd make 20 patches and every one would have a letter missing for some yeah um, or or just a simple slip and a little bit of dyslexia and suddenly jeff becomes fedge yep yeah well there's a new name kind of yeah. like printing a job with your town that you live in spelled wrong you know or kind of like your company tuscan name being spelt wrong on your, your business card for there. five years yeah <laughs> i'm still mad at the person that noticed that Embroid, never Embro forget diary. <laughs> never forget. Embro I mean, diary. We all spell it that way at least once. Yeah, I did. Just, just not on our thousand business cards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is true. Yeah. All so, right. Um, Ramona wanted to see how to do the rotation thing in uh, in Wellcom. I think I'm set up here. How do I? Uh, there should be a button that says present or share. Uh, oh, yep. Here it is. Okay. Share screen. It's easier so two monitors. Yeah, well, that ain't happening. Uh, <laughs> uh, share screen. So it should just be. Yeah, you can just share uh, Wilcom to just the application. Yeah. Oh, is that how? Window. Yeah, we, we the, need to present I, and share screen. You, you I have choices. There one, you go. One problem yeah. with doing just Wilcom, it might not show you the dialog all the time. Like oh. if there's a pop up. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, what are you guys seeing? Uh, we, over we right see your screen. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I did it right? You can see it? Uh -huh. I see Ultimate Special Edition, that's for sure. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm covering it on my screen right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's how that works. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll roll with this if that works. So um, up here in the, in the uh, 
adjustment tools. So you have to have your image highlighted. And then uh, this one here is transformed by a reference line numerically. You click on that one. That's where you can do your uh, your your distance. So I just pick a couple inches, three inches, two inches, whatever, on the ruler. Try to make sure the line is somewhat straight uh, with the hash marks on the ruler. And then it'll pop up a little window, resize to two. Now, even if it says millimeters over there, you can just put in the quotation marks and tell it it's two inches. And then boom, Spoken it'll resize like that. True group. American, it's yeah. Freedom yeah. units. <clears throat> yeah. So then that'll that'll resize it. So now it's scaled correctly, but it's obviously crooked as as heck. So then you go back, you make sure your image is still highlighted, and you go back into the same tool, transform by reference line numerically. And now I can click on the edge of the ruler, and grab as much as as you can, because that takes more of the error out of it and then rotate that to zero degrees oh that took it to 90 so now we can just spin it backwards 90 now your now your ruler is straight obviously so, i mean if you lined it up with whatever whatever you straight you're and scaled so yeah that one i so, did not ever use but i could see that being handy yeah, yeah, I use it a lot because then, then whatever I've aligned the ruler to is, is horizontal, and uh, and and to the right scale, and uh, and then of course you hit K to lock it in so you don't don't lose that anymore. Yeah, K yeah, to that's, lock. That's it. that's one thing that I you know as a digitizer, if someone is sending me scanned art, I do request it with you know tell them tell them to lay down that ruler, and that way. You know, not, not, I don't rely on the angle so much just because you have to be kind of on, on point when you're scanning it, but at least it will give me the, the true scale. Yeah. yeah. If they don't have a ruler, the other thing you can get them to do is put their company credit card down. Uh, cause then you have, you know, how big that is, you know, size. Plus if they become that crappy customer, then you have their credit card. So there you go. Yeah. Just don't do that. Yeah. Don't, don't ask for a business it. card because they're not all the same size. Yeah. Yeah. Tell them to scan it twice, one with the back side and one with the front side. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Cindy asks, isn't your grid set to a size? You can look on that too. Um, you can set um, your grid to a size like 10 to 10 by 10, I think is what I have mine set to 10 millimeters by 10 yeah. millimeters, but you can change yeah. that measurement. And then you can you can like scale the picture up and down until until it kind of matches it your grid, that's a little bit of trial and error, um, but that, that'll do the same job. Yeah, I, I, I like Mike's method. I use that quite a bit, so. Yeah. And speaking of scaling and like rotating images, if you're using our favorite software that we use called ShareX to do screenshots and little screen snippings, sometimes if, at least when I do it, if I do like a screenshot with that, of a web page or something and then put in Wilcom and you try sizing it and it just disappears. It's because you guys have the file saved and then pull it in. Uh, sometimes uh, just copied art like that is a little funky. It's something I've seen actually quite a bit. It was really annoying for the longest time and it was just my procedure. So I had to fix myself. Yeah. But all right well i think that pretty much covers everything we we're going to cover today uh, unless there's anything else you guys want an exclamation point on the end here and then some we got five more minutes to make fun of matt well, well, I, got I, <laughs> hey, I think, there, all, there I think we all need to give him a slow yeah, clap you did, for you what did he really, did today did really a good job. so coming up next week i will not be embroidering on a hat because <laughs> i have no design to do so oh we can fix that oh yeah and uh yeah, I won't say that. <laughs> uh, hey, is there anything going on at the old nerd store that you want everyone to know about? Oh, that's closed. It's closed. Oh, did it? But I do. Oh. Yeah. yeah, it closed last night, but uh, last we're, night? we're getting the process going to get all the orders processed now. And uh, appreciate everybody that did order. We did have uh, a good turnout awesome. this year. That's yep. awesome. 
and and there might still be the Canadian version if we can muscle arm Mike. Into yeah, we it. just haven't had any time to to chat that up, but I'm I'm sure we can we can uh, whip something together. Yeah, we'll uh, figure it out. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, guys, uh, if you go to links dot the links dot embnerd.com you can join you can see all the links that we have you can follow us on youtube facebook you can go find our facebook group and if you want to join the conversation you can go to discord uh i highly recommend joining our discord channel also if you want to buy us a coffee that goes to the web hosting for threadconverter.com the greatest threadconverter.com there is um <laughs> jeff reading a script I am. It's the, it's the script. Uh, coming up here, I'm going to be heading to the Apple Key Getaway with Adam. We're going to be teaching a few classes. Other than that, I think that pretty much covers all of the major announcements that we have. So unless you guys want to add anything else, I'll close it out. Uh, does everyone want to keep seeing the nerd from the north in our lives? Uh, go ahead and put a comment down below. If you don't, we're going to assume that you just didn't hear this part of the video and we'll still force him to join so. all right well I that like is be absolutely useless more often <laughs> <laughs> all <laughs> right well we've got justin armenta from ja digitizing studios mike muldowney nerd from the north but in tulsa oklahoma uh from tequila Tees. did i get that right all right close enough close enough and we've got matthew <laughs> and from patchphrase i'm jeff fuller from fuller embroidery works we're all here representing the embroidery nerd and we will catch you guys next time See you guys. Peace. Night, everybody.